We now continue the tradition of welcoming a visiting speaker to our AGM. Tonight, we welcome Pauline Smith, Chief Executive of the Development Trust Association Scotland, an organization of which CDT is a member and which gives CDT valuable support and guidance. Pauline took up her post in July this year after years of experience in development trusts, having been Chief Executive of Connect Community Trust in Easter House, Glasgow. She is experienced in social enterprise and grew a development trust from one employee to 56. She's also served as chair of the Scottish Community Alliance at Glasgow Empowering Communities Consortium, Total Homes Cooperative and various local and national networks. Pauline is obviously very well qualified to speak to us about the challenges and aspirations of Cooper Development Trust and of Cooper and District. Pauline, over to you. Thank you very much, Bill. You know so much about me. I'm impressed. <laughs> Where did all that come from? <laughs> um, so, yeah, th thank you for inviting me along um, tonight. It's been really interesting hearing about some of the work that you've been going on um, or going through in the last year from Bill there. Um, yeah, I was going to tell you a wee bit about myself first, but actually I think Bill's done that for me, to be honest. So, so yeah, I mean, I've taken up the post in July um, with DTAS as the chief exec, but I'm not new to DTAS or development trust. So I bring a wealth of experience with me, um, understand the sort of the, the experiences that you all go through, um, how it is difficult um, and it can be challenging working within communities. It also can be really extremely satisfying and all the dis differences that we make within communities is it just it can't be underestimated and we need to be shouting from the, the rooftops about the work that goes on within communities and entirely slightly within communities often under volunteers only um yes yeah, so thank you for coming for having me um since starting, I've tried to get out and visit as many development trusts as possible because my experience mostly is within urban areas. So I've been trying to get out to as many um, rural sort of um, areas, but also the membership in general, just to really understand what everyone's going through. Um, we've, we've been in lockdown the same as everyone else, you know, we're in the process of trying to figure out exactly what it is communities need, how have they changed? Um, and I'm really looking forward to going to see Cooper at some point um, in the near future. So I think Alice and Ruth have been out um, already, so I'm keen to sort of follow in their footsteps and, and come out and see what's what's happening on the ground and, and get involved and hear from all of you and even come to one of your board meetings or whatever, whatever I'm invited to, I'm coming along to. So, um, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, I talked about Bill a little bit today and read some of you, um, I had a, a skim through some of your reports on online on your website. So I'm, I'm seeing that you're 15 years old next this year or um, recently. So interestingly, the DTAS is 20 years old next year. So it's our 20 year anniversary. So I'm really looking forward to getting out to the members where um, lots of stories to tell. Cooper, and Cooper will have lots of stories to tell. So will all of our members. So we're looking forward to bringing those, those together, um, whether it's in video form or storytelling, et cetera, creative stories about the journeys that development trusts have been on um, and where they are now and what, what's ahead of them, really. So, but yeah, so well done with the 15 years and it'll be 15, 20 more years, won't it, um, of developing the, the organisation and what needs within the community. Um, the development trusts have, have, have lots of different plans and activities, um, some of them that are doing it within their, their communities direct. Some are looking at assets, buildings, lands, or working in partnership to, to deliver um, services directly. I had a quick look at the Cooper Interpretive Plan, is that right? So in 2017 that you carried out, which is great. And I love the statement where you've put, um, Cooper is the finest asset, Cooper's finest asset is its people. And I think that's such a true phrase. And um, quite often assets get talked about as buildings and facilities and houses and you know, like physical structures. I think I'm really impressed that you've got that as your foreword of actually Cooper's people are the assets and they're the finest assets that uh, people are the ones who shape the place and that's what development trusts are all about. The bottom-up approach is very much about people um, and we've just had a chat before the meeting started there about people are that you know that you need to consult the people and what they want and then um, develop from there. That's the core of what development trusts and community trusts are all about. Bill also said that they're actually, and I've read it in one of um, the, the papers that's come out about the vision as well, a creative community with cause, and the cause being the people again. So it's so important, and I'm, I'm really impressed that that's at the, the heart of everything that you, you're all doing, which is brilliant. Um, 
pleased to see um, that Bruce is here, actually. Um, we were talking about the strengthening communities funding that you secured through DTAS. Um, it's a key part of our member support package that we've had for, for many, many years um, in partnership with the Scottish Government. So not only does it you know, help within the communities, it also reckon, the Scottish Government recognise the work that you and other members are doing. So I'm glad to see Bruce is here tonight and um, your, your new admin support will be coming in too. Um, exciting news and I'm sure the post will help capacity um, of the organisation. I'm presuming everyone else is volunteers up until this point. So yeah, yeah. So brilliant to see that the community communities, that's the, the core of it, build capacity within organisations and um, to take the pressure off the volunteers that have been there often from the start. And um, yeah, so that you're, hopefully the Strength Communities Project funding will, will really help with that and Bruce will get, get stuck in with all the exciting projects that are upcoming. Um, yeah, I was interested in reading about the Inner Court project as well. You've mentioned it earlier, the Development of Kingdom Housing Association. Um, brilliant to see that you're working in partnership with other people within the, the area. Um, Compute would be the driving force behind um, the actual development itself, which is brilliant. You know, that's come straight from the community, hasn't it, of actually um, highlighting an area that needed to be development and then working in partnership with someone that could take it to the next steps. I actually had a, a meeting with Archaeology Scotland. Um, I don't know if they're the archaeology guys that are working with you, but really interesting project to be able you know, like to not get not, not lose, I suppose, the rich history. It sounds like Cooper has a, an awful lot of looking at the events that you're doing and um yeah, the archaeology of invite, inviting other community members, whether it's children or or, or adults that, that are involved in that, really keeps that story going and keeps the, the history alive and, and and well of before before the next stages of development. So that's great. We're really looking forward to working with Archaeology Scotland as well on some other ownership support projects that we've got in the going across the country. Um, what shocked me about the Court project actually as well was um, we we talk about community anchors quite a lot. So you know we've been talking about them for years. I remember years ago being involved in DTA and thinking it's another buzzword that's coming out. You know, community anchors. That is who development trusts are. But actually, you know, as the years have gone by, I, I think it really does state who you are and what you're doing. So community anchors of working with a housing association or other partners certainly seems to be what Cooper Cooper is doing. So. Um, yeah, I'm, that's really good to see, um, and I think it's a prime example of what a community anchor organisation is within within your community. Um, I was hearing about the the twenty. How many organisations was it you had yesterday? Again, another prime example of coming together. Is it thirty three organisations? Thirty three people. Yes. Thirty three people, um, all in the same room. Um, prime example of how Cooper can bring a community together, isn't it? You know, and and work together with other organisations. Um, it's no mean feat, I, I, you know, I work across various communities and it's no, no mean feat of bringing 33 people together of different organisations to talk about um, plans for the area and how you can share resources, look at funding options together, um, yeah, share ideas. So it's really good to see that and I'm excited to see where that sort of goes in the, the future. Um, I'm sure I'll, I'll get along to one of the events that you're, you're planning as well, hopefully. <laughs> So the, I was I was going to talk a wee bit about the the main role of DTAS. Um, so we're in the process of revising all our membership benefits. We've got a range of topics that we're, we're relaunching um, through the regional and network meetings. So I don't know if there's been one in Cooper at the moment, has there? Regional network meeting? Any? No. Yes. No. Not so they will be coming to you soon. Um, great opportunity for getting development trust together. We're also planning a strength in communities project um, network meeting. So that'll bring all the strength in community projects together. So sharing ideas and um, lessons learned, anything, the issues, barriers, anything that we want to develop, any other support that's required. Um, and it's hard for me not to talk about the cost of living. Um, another that's obviously the top of everyone's agenda at the moment, and a lot of DTAS energy is going into you know, sourcing support, seeking support, providing support for, for members out there. Um, and I know, you know, um, Bill was talking to me earlier, and there is pockets of deprivation everywhere, although everyone's not on the top SIMD. We have relaunched a programme of funding with the lottery today, so please have a wee look out for that. Um, and that's about distributing funds into areas of deprivation or people that are vulnerable or struggling 
and um, it was mentioned at one of our Pockets and Prospects funding that one of the members in a rural area really struggled to access any funding actually because they weren't in the SIMD areas. And I think at DTAS, well, I don't think, I know at DTAS we are recognising that every community is different, you know, and you can be in an athletic area with also pockets of deprivation and, and other struggles. So so please bear in mind that DTAS is, is there for, for, and the funding is there for yourself and others to access and it's flexible and we're approachable, obviously, to the needs of the Development Trust membership. Um, and we'll listen to what, what, what the struggles are relating to the communities that you're, you're living and working in. Um, obviously, policy and influencing, it's, it's key to what DTA does. Um, and we've got top priorities with community wealth building, net zero, asset ownership, local democracy and governance, alternative finance models, renewable energies, housing. Bruce and, Bruce and Bill and myself were just talking um, as well before the, the meeting started about sort of net zero and how, you know, like there's renewable energy, there's a lot of solutions in there and lots of communities want to do something. Unfortunately, it does sometimes, you know, land on the community and development trust to do it, hopefully in partnership with councils and local authorities and Scottish government, which is where we come in and we're hoping to influence and help with that process. So but watch this space, but we want to hear from you what, what's actually um, of concern to you and what's top priority for you in your, your area so that we can influence in, in, in Scottish government and within local government as well. Um, a couple of things I picked up on from you in last year from the from Surf that was here. He talked about a number of those policies that I've just mentioned there. And so I just wanted to say a couple of things that I can obviously see that it's, it's hard. You need to look back to actually see how you're progressing, I think, um, to make sure that you, you remember what you're you're doing and how it's fitting all of these things. And maybe you're good at that. Not everyone is. But um so he mentioned certain net zero and, and the community wealth building and yeah, I mean, I can see you, you, you're obviously a resilient organisation um, through and through and are doing the best for your community. Um, I think the strength of the community is funding. You're obviously building capacity within your organisation and um, volunteers as well. The Bonnie, Be Bonnie Gate and uh, the development there, you're absolutely investing in the environment and changing the physical environment as well as the, the social fabric within it um, with your events and various heritage projects that you've got going on. And bringing the community together, which is which is brilliant. Um, continued work at Cooper now. I thought that was amazing. I hadn't actually heard about it, or I hadn't read about it until tonight or this afternoon. So I'm really interested in finding out more about that because I think there's other communities out there that could could, could learn from that as well, learn some, le you know, and and learn some skills and how they go about it and what they can do in their um their areas. And I think key to it all, all is community plans, community action plans, police plans, whatever what we want to call them tonight. You know, like consulting the community. Um, yes, yeah, talk to Bill and you know that yeah, that it, it's been a while since the stretch. And I think probably, you know, it is about keeping consultation with the community and what what is next for them, what's the next steps. Um, so yeah, and I think you you, you seem to be um, have that at the heart of what your work is. So yeah, I'm proud that DTAS can be a part of that journey and continue to support you. So yeah, I'm really sort of interested to hear from you um, of what, that's my bit, um, but in a, a sort of run through of what I can see Cooper's doing and how it's a DTAS member and why, why it's developing, but DTAS is here for you to support you and what you need and, and you shape what we do as well. So thank you very much. Okay. Morning, thank you for that. Um, I'm going to ask the first question while my colleagues yeah. think of more difficult ones. Um, oh, <laughs> you, mentioned, you mentioned the word anchor several times, and I used it in yep. my um, report too, because we talk about the food trails being anchored on Cooper. There are five of them, and they go out like lozenges geographically, but they, they, the starting point in each, you know, if you follow the map, it, not people will follow it religiously, but if you follow the map, it's anchored to Cooper. You mentioned anchor in the context of archaeology, and it was a big boost to the town when we realised that our history didn't start in 800 AD, but in two and a half thousand BC. Wow. Um, that was quite a thought because this wasn't the sort of um, picture that people, even the locals had of Cooper before then. But the one you've really, I want to take you up on anchoring. The new fund that you announced today is called the Community Anchor Funding, if, I, if I've got that right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mentioned that we have, um, when we were talking earlier today, I mentioned that we have two postcodes in Cooper on the SIMD, but we also serve a wide 
rural community where there are pockets of serious deprivation, lack of transport, all sorts of reasons why people um, are, in, are suffering. I think I mentioned to you this morning that our food bank issues three tons of supplies a month, which is a remarkable statistic by any standards. And I'm just wondering, because I haven't had time to read the brochure on it yet, does this community anchor funding give us the opportunity to do something in our more rural areas? Or is it tied to a something that's so identifiably a community? No, no. So um, it's called the Community Anchor Fund. So it goes through development trusts and it's got a few other partners in there through CIS and Poverty Alliance. So um, it's directly coming through us so that we ensure that the, it's going into the, the communities that development trusts serve, basically, and puts the trust in them to, and, and the same similar happens with the COVID funds, where we're putting the trust in our organisations to know what's on the ground and within their communities. So, um, so no, it doesn't have to be a specific, it doesn't have to be in specific postcode area or SIMD. Um, the fund is very much about setting up to, for you to tell us what the funding is desperately needed for, you know, so it can be in rural areas or urban areas. Um, that is down to the development trusts and anchor organisations to um, let us know. Um, so we, we, we for many, many years have ar argued our point about community anchors and putting trust in them and then, you know, not being so heavy on the, the monitoring and the, 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 the criteria, I suppose because you have to put trust in communities to be flexible with the funding to get it in the heart of where it's needed, but actually going directly into the communities. So that's what, what this fund's about um, and being trusted to um, support those and get it into the, the heart of where people are going to and sort of vulnerable people. Thank you. Thanks, Andy, for being able to understand you must go. Um, well, right. what, we, what we'd say as well, community anchors and, and, and within Scottish government is always about, is, is, is got an emphasis on working in partnerships. So you talk about the food bank and other places within Cooper, do you know, like, so it could be that the Cooper Development Trust is the anchor that brings some funding in to then support other organisations that maybe don't have access to that funding or are struggling within the, the, the area as well. So it can be used in that way as well. Thank you. Um, if I can just comment, um, Pauline, in case you hadn't, uh, you won't, you won't know this. You, your team um, gave us the heads up on the um, in, investing in communities fund. Um, we were uh, all set to do something about finding um, a, a community hub for arts and culture and a better place for the museum. When we discovered that only charities could uh, apply, so we brokered um, three local skios to put in a joint bid. Um, and that bid has, has gone in for, for Cooper. That's uh, fantastic. Excellent. And we wouldn't even have heard of that funding if your team hadn't alerted us. So thank you very much. Oh, you're very welcome. Um, there's an e-newsletter going out at the end of the um, end of this week. Um, so that'll have some more details on different funds and different support that's out there as well, which again, you could share with, with other members in the, the community as well. Thank you. Ali Murray, I think you had a question for Pauline. Hi there, Pauline. Thanks for that. Um, just what what can your organisation do for um, Cooper? <laughs> depends what you it depends what you need. <laughs> so I suppose um, our list of member benefits are, are lots of things to do with governance, training, and and um, yes, governance and training for the boards. Um, we can support access to funds for community action plans. So if there's engagements that you require um, within the organisation, do strategic reviews. Um, we link you into other funding opportunities. Um, we do director training, the, we've got governance um, support packages. We've got toolkits on um, monitoring and, and proving what you do. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty varied to be honest. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a list of about 70 odd, odd different support packages that we could give you. Um, the key is the development officer. So at the moment you've got Ruth, I think, who's the Strength and Communities Project Manager for your area and for your, your funds. But we also have a team of development officers in the back end of that. We also have a community ownership support service and we have a community shares team. So community ownership supports team is very much about asset ownership. So if you were looking at a building or looking at land within the area, then they would handhold you through the process of that. Community shares team is about the alternative finance side of things. So if 
some people want to set up community benefits um, societies to raise funds to um, refurbish a building or you know <laughs> could be various things crowdfunding and, and bonds etc yeah I mean lots lots of things it depends we just need to chat about what you think your direction is that you're going in and um, yeah and then we, we'll see where we can we can support that Great. Okay, so, are there timelines for these kind of initiatives? Have you got um, set deadlines? <coughs> so, our support is there, not non-stop. Um, community ownership support it's, it's a rolling program. Our funds, um, the lottery fund that's out just now, that's a deadline. Can't remember the exact date of it. It's only a six-month fund, so there is a deadline on that. Pockets and prospects. Um, hopefully, it will relaunch again. That's just closed, and the green shoots funding that's out just now. That's a rolling program, so you can apply any times for that. I'm happy to send it, whether it's Bruce or you know Bill or yourselves. And um, we can send through some specific inf information on those funds. Um, but everything else is a rolling program, just as and when you need it. You need the support, really. Okay. Thank you very much. Ali, you said earlier on that when you come to AGMs, you always worry that you're going to end up with a job. Um, you, you, you're quite close to having to read what comes from Pauline. <laughs> Other questions or comments, please? <laughs> One issue that I might raise is uh, that uh, five council uh, have started the process of revising the development plan in which um, um, no doubt Cooper Development Trust will want to take a particular interest and I think there's a consultation which goes on until about the 18th of December. Um, now to what extent do you think Development Trusts should be ginger groups in um, commenting on uh, in some detail on development plan progress. Is that something which you see as a significant role for development trusts? Uh, uh, you won't, won't, won't be surprised that local authorities, I think, should take development trusts very seriously. That, that's, that's our angle for it. Um, so we are very much about bottom-up approach, you know, of development trusts being at the heart of those conversations right at the start, I would say. Um, so if there's development plans on the table, I would see Development Trust yes being involved in that as much. I mean, it's up to every community. I can't talk for every community wanting to be that, but my opinion would be and of, of Development Trust being at the heart of some of those developments and being able to influence them um, as well. So whether it's even just as basic as procurement and, and of what's happening with once it's in place or whether it's at the heart of actually what is getting developed within those plans. So every local authority is different how they, they've implemented them, I would say, but um, yes, I would say development trusts have to be at the heart of that. Thank you. We, we have rather taken that on board and um, one of Bruce's big roles in the uh, in the spring, among all the other things he's going to get on his shoulders, will be um, preparing for um, community plan, place plan and responses to the development plan. So any number of plans, um, what we need to get, of course, is delivery. Yeah, I, th I think that's the, the problem is that people can get too bogged down with and so many plans that are out just now. So I was just saying earlier that, that you know, um, I went to a presentation when the development trust put up a, a slide of 20 different plans that they were expected to look at or produce or, or could produce. And it was recommended they, they look at them. And really, it needs to be a bit more structured than that. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Our, our MP has visited us briefly, but has had to leave again. Um, she heard some of the more poignant um, commenting and was spared my report, so that, that was a good visit. Um, are there any other questions? Because I see half past seven is uh, fast approaching, and that would be a good target, I think, to wrap this up. Or yeah. before, there's nothing else. Could I have some more questions, Jonathan? Yeah, Pauline, is there a, is there a sort of link on your website to the the funding funding that is available and what particular pockets of funding are available? Yeah, so our website is needing a complete overhaul. We've got a meeting on Friday. Hopefully, it'll come. It'll come. Um, but no, most of them are going out through mailings, so member mailings. So we've kept it quite through the email list. But um, I'll send it all to to Bruce and for circulation around you all. One one because there's there's some funds that are just for our members. So if we put it on our um, but the members area is very, very close to getting a complete revamp. 
Um, it's been worked on for quite a few months now, so it shall be there in the members area. So on our website, there's the public pages and then there's a member login, which if you haven't got, then or will, you know, any of you want, you can have. Um, we can get everyone, some, some boards have got three or four people on the member logins, so you can see all the, the updates that are in there. Um, okay. Just give us just give us an idea of, of how many development trusts you oversee and what your budget is for the year, just so that we have a sort of. You know. So we've got about three hundred and seventy members at the moment, so full members. Um, in the process, we've got about seventy early stage members that are going through the process to become a development trust, and we're also getting about two inquiries a week at the moment of uh, people wanting to set up development trusts. So I put a lot of that down to people have delivered through COVID and have, have realised actually they want to formalise their groups um, so that have maybe been informal groups up until now. But 370 is in our, our membership at the moment and that, that grows every day. Um, we also have wider uh, cost membership. So we work with non-development trusts, so communities that are just are looking to take on a bit of land. We don't necessarily have to be a development trust, but we can see the benefit of that, um, of being part of DTAS in the wider sense of things so yeah yeah and obviously a lot of your role is guidance but also some of it sounds like it's channeling funding um and you do you have an overall picture of what how much funding you channel every year uh, total no not off the top of my head so um it's not a huge amount i mean you're talking maybe two hundred thousand or something like that potentially um through some of the, the funds so we used to manage strength and communities directly ourselves so if you ever looked at our accounts there's a wee bit of a skew with it doesn't give you the true picture sometimes one because of the covid funds that we channeled through ourselves development just last year or in the years before and also strength and communities project funding which used to come through us but now goes direct from Scottish government. We are just one of the partners within that to recommend or support projects through that. So, okay, okay. Interesting yeah. comment about the COVID um, impact, Pauline, because that it was the COVID problems that gave rise to the that informal forum of which thirty three people were talking last night. It was all done online to start with, and that's the other good thing about COVID. The only other good thing about COVID is we've all had to learn how to operate things like this. Yeah, yeah. We found yeah, that no. attending meetings when they were online, whereas they wouldn't have come out on a snowy night to, to come to a meeting. Yeah, no, it's been it's been really impressive to see how many groups have, have continued those relationships that have started through partnerships through COVID, you know, and working together with that. So we've seen that a lot, and the the pockets and prospects funding that we we've we've just issued, um, that is very much about community anchors supporting smaller organisations. And a lot of them have been created through the COVID delivery and them support, which has been good to see. Thank you very much. Is there a final question for Pauline? Yeah, Pauline, I was wondering about, um, you know, your, your links into the Scottish government and how that mechanism works. Um, we, well, we have regular meetings with them, um, so we would like, I, I mean, I, I sort of call us a trusted friend to a certain extent, but we're not afraid to say when things are looking to be improved or things that could be changed. So um, we have sort of regular reports that go into them through, partly because we get funded partly, partly from them, um, not by all means all of our, our funding from them, but um, we provide updates on the issues that, that people are facing within our membership. So we've shared like our cost of living, um, cost of living crisis um, survey that we did. We've shared information on community wealth building an influence for additional funds um so yeah I, mean, I would call us a trusted friend to a certain extent um but also not afraid because when it, a couple of the network meetings i've been at people are asking us to be maybe a bit more vocal on social media and various other things and it's not that we're not you know like we've probably we do it face to face and within meetings with scottish government and others to try and influence policy um and there's lots of things come out of that the strength and communities project funding is one of those things you know um, we get consulted on investing in communities funds, um, what the shape of future funding should be. So we're around the table with some of them. We're also in, in the net zero strategy groups. Um, so yeah, trying to influence how the funding or the streams or the support from Scottish government could, could get wider and how we can influence that specifically for our members. But there's other people around that table um, who have other membership organisations. So we're one of those voices on behalf of you. So that's why, um, I'm keen to get more questionnaires and surveys out to you. The network meetings will provide us with that two-way conversation with our membership. I would, I'm 
conscious that we can't get everyone around the table. So we want to get as many voices heard as possible. And I, I know personally myself, um, being experienced with network before, I don't want I want my voice heard, you know, and I want to be able to voice that opinion for the for you. And it's a wide spectrum of voices we've got right across, but they're all valid. Um, so we're trying to find extra processes that we can put in place there to get your voices. What is what's what is it for Cooper that we need to do? You know, what is it we need for Mary Help? You know, like they'll all be slightly different, but we that's our role. That's what we need to be doing. Great, thank you. Thank you. Bonnie, thank you for that. I think uh, I think I'll call a halt now. Um, it's been a very um, interesting and busy set of questions, but uh, my vote of thanks, of course, is for your presentation to us. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being here in the first place. Thank you for ranging over um, things that are relevant to us. It makes us think what we really ought to be doing and uh, getting around to before we meet again. And uh, very interested at the end there. Yes, please be the voice of obviously this development trust, among all the others you put to Scottish government. We need our voices heard, and I know you're you're going to make sure that DTAS does that for us. And you can take back a message to your team: we are very well supported, and uh, we value our membership. So thank you very much for speaking to us. Thank you for answering the questions, and thank you for all you're going to do for us in the future. Uh, no, no pressure. All right. No pressure at all. <laughs> thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. I think I'll call a halt and uh, Bruce will now cease um, recording and we'll all go to our evenings and enjoy the show you're going to tonight, Pauline.